I have a confession to make. I am a millennial. It's taken me a while, and I've struggled with that term, because admitting it, I know that you assume a number of things. That I am young. That I don't take my life seriously. That I don't want to get married. That I don't want to have kids. I don't want to ever buy a house. That I'm wimpy. That I'm weak. That I can't take critique. And yet, I'm a millennial. And I am here to tell you today that I want you to embrace your inner millennial. Because while some of those stereotypes aren't true, some of them are. Some of them are so true that they make up the three pillars of what I call millennialism. Prioritizing education over life milestones. Embracing technology. And building supportive communities. And when I say millennial, here's the spoiler. I don't mean what you think I mean. But let's step back. Let's actually define millennial the way that you're probably more familiar with it. Millennial is a generation born from 1980 to 2000. They were originally called Generation Y because they came after Generation X. And Generation X came after the baby boomers who were born from about 1945 to about 1960, 65, depending on the study. These three generations make up the bulk of the American workplace today, and they will make up the bulk of my talk today. The first myth about millennials relates to the definition I just gave you, that all millennials are young. Well, if millennials are born from 1980 to 2000, that means that this year the last millennial turns 18. That means that there are more millennials that are in their 30s than are under the age of 25. Millennials are no longer young. They are adult members of our community. And no longer can we dismiss them simply for the sin of being young. And if you don't think that that's a problem that's plagued every generation, baby boomers in the audience, think back. What did the greatest generation say about you when you were in your 20s? So no longer young. Let's get to the next myth, that millennials don't want to take on life milestones. They don't want to get married. They don't want to have kids. They don't want to buy houses. So let's look at the data. A woman born in 1950 who is a baby boomer, according to the US Census, on average had her first child at the age of 21. Today, women on average have their first child at the age of 27. That's a huge change. That's a big change. You're talking about 50, 60 years, you're talking about a massive demographic shift across millions and millions of people. But is it really that different? Let's look back at the woman born in 1950. If that woman went to college, the average age of her first child was 28 years old, almost the equivalent to today's millennials. So the difference here is education. And it bears out again in Generation X. A woman born in 1967 and a member of Gen X, the national average was 23 or 24 for having her first child. If she went to college, it was 31 years old. This isn't about being smarter or being more educated in that sense. This is simply about educational attainment and the time it takes to do it. Because education is one of those goals that every generation, every person around the world, I believe supports. We, we all like education, yeah? Yeah, there we go. So we've had a victory. Baby boomers, according to the World Bank, by 1980 had achieved 54% of Americans went on to post high school education, anything. Uh, a professional certificate, an associate's degree, uh, a, a doctorate, a master's, a bachelor's. By 2012, according to the World Bank, we had reached 93% of the United States. That's a victory. That's a huge change, and that is a goal worked on by baby boomers, Gen X, and Gen Y. And it's something we should be proud of. But it's also a causal issue in delaying life milestones, because the longer you spend getting your education, the later you have to get into your life milestones. The same argument, the same trend is seen in marriage. In the 1950s, the average age of first marriage, according to the census, was 22 for men, 20 for women. 
Today it's 29 for men, 27 for women. The change is not choice, it's educational attainment. Let's go to the other one, houses. Let's say that today a millennial who faces huge change, char, uh, challenges, trying to buy a house, right? Rising house prices, stagnant wages, massive student loan. Let's imagine, just for argument's sake, that in four years, they can save enough money for a down payment. It's pretty difficult, but let's do it just for the math. If you graduate college, you are 21 to 23 years old. Four years after that, you're 25 to 27 when you can buy a house. If you go on to a master's degree, all of a sudden you're 27 or 29 to buy a house. And if you do anything else, uh, another master's, a PhD, volunteer time, work, go on a mission, you're in your 30s before you can buy a house. That's not a choice. That's not a delay. That's a consequence of the victory that all three generations I've talked about today have had because they have encouraged attainment of education. This is a consequence, not a choice. Let's get to another myth. That millennials are technology obsessed, that we're self-obsessed, social media, the phones. Frankly, we all do that part. A national magazine did identify the most narcissistic generation. In a cover article, they said, this is the most narcissistic and self-obsessed generation. They are obsessed with videoing themselves and tracking the minutia of their daily lives. That magazine was Newsweek. The year was 1985. And they were talking about baby boomers and Gen X. For the dastardly reason that everyone was buying home video cameras. Oh, self-obsessed and terrible. So that's not a new challenge. That's a pretty much a challenge that any technology that's changed our world is triggered this self-obsession, obsessed with technology aspect. And let's look at millennials didn't bring the technology with them to the workplace. They arrived alongside of it. The 1990s and the tech revolution that gave us email, the internet, the ability to work from home, global connections. That was brought about by leaders like Bill Gates and Microsoft. Bill Gates, who's a baby boomer. That was continued by Jeff Bezos of Amazon and the founders of Google, who were Gen X. Yes, Mark Zuckerberg is a millennial and he did give us Facebook, but that's not new. That was simply another step in a long line of innovation. And technology is not simply the province of the young or the millennials. It is a challenge and an opportunity faced by all of these generations. An opportunity to connect and build our world and work more flexibly and more productively. One that all three generations, baby boomers, Gen X, and millennials, have to embrace to thrive and succeed in our modern world. Let's get to the last myth here. That millennials are weak, right? We can't take critique. Uh, we're raised on participation trophies because that's all I can need to feel good about myself. Where did they learn that? Was it in school? Who designed that school? Step back for a second. Even if you don't have kids, imagine how you would design the most ideal educational environment for your child. What would it have? A supportive teacher? Individual attention? Feedback that was supportive and engaged, not just harsh and critical? recognition and opportunity to thrive? I think it would for all of your kids. And if it's good enough for our kids, if it's good enough for their education, why isn't it good enough for our young workers? Why when these workers arrive at their jobs do we get angry that they want something similar to what has been brought about for years? The term helicopter parenting, the idea of sheltering children through their tough educational worlds, came about in 1985. It was a term birthed by baby boomers and Gen Xers. It was a system instilled by them in our schools. It is an experience lived fully by millennials, and it is a demand they are making in the workplace that is simply a continuation of what baby boomers and Gen Xers have wanted. And it's something that they should want in the workplace. They shouldn't reject millennials for wanting this. They should embrace it. Who doesn't want a manager that's supportive, that gives them individual feedback, that gives you an opportunity to succeed, who recognizes your effort, even if you're not always 100% successful. 
Because here's the real fact, folks. We are all millennials. If you don't believe me, I want you to take my test. Raise your hand. Are you alive today? Raise your hand. Yep, everybody. Yep, most people are still alive in my talk. <laughs> you are a millennial because it is the new millennium and you are alive. You are the last children of the 20th century and you are today's millennials because you thrive in the 21st century. Because you embrace the ideas of millennials. If you believe that education is important and should be prioritized over life milestones, you're a millennial. If you believe that technology should be embraced, you're a millennial. If you believe that we should build supportive communities for all of us, you are a millennial. So I ask you today, I want you to go forth into the world, I want you to go into your lives, and I want you to embrace your inner millennial. It's good for you, it's good for your businesses, and it's good for our communities. I'm Brandon Blackburn Dwyer, and I am proudly a millennial.